<laughs> Welcome to everyone to our community call on incentivizing or impact inner source culture change. Um, I am delighted to welcome here today our three other panelists. They are Mashari, Harleen and Paul. So wave everyone. <laughs> we, we will do an introduction in a minute um, and to get kick started, I will say hello. My name is Claire Dillon. I'm the executive director with Inner Source Commons um, and I am delighted to be joined with our three panelists here today. And as a get go for a panel discussion, I will ask each one to introduce uh, themselves and uh, their own experience around inner source culture change, because some folks are coming at it from different perspectives. Um, so, Paul, maybe we'll get started with you. Can you share, please, what your experiences are with inner source culture? change yeah sure thank you claire for having us today welcome everybody um yeah well my uh, my experience started about uh, five six years ago um and more recently with regards to inner source uh, about three years ago um and uh, the experiences are internally microsoft but also with customers um because my day job is uh, I'm, a, I'm a consultant doing management consultancy with customers and involved in helping large organizations to adopt new ways of working while adopting our obviously cloud services of Microsoft. Um, so I help them to move the needle uh, from a hero culture to a culture where sharing is caring, uh, success is recognized and, and failure is treated as, a, as an opportunity to learn. So um, and we have some great success stories to share there. And uh, I don't know one, if you want to elaborate right away or well, let's, let's do the round so everyone knows yeah. who's who and then we'll come back to that. Thank you, Paul. Um, Harleen, would you like to introduce yourself, please? Sure. Thanks, Claire. Hi, everyone. I'm Harleen Kaur and I'm uh, glad to have this opportunity to be able to speak to you. So uh, introducing myself, I'm a consultant with Microsoft in DevOps and information security space. Um, so dealing with uh, customers, helping them with the cultural changes day in, day out is what my day job is. And uh, my experience with inner source has uh, started uh, almost two years uh, back. And it has been primarily through uh, the dojo community uh, that I have been uh, working with. So I have a lot of experiences uh, to share, but uh, we can uh, do that during the course of time. So I'll hand it over back to Claire. Thank you, Harley. Mishari, coming to you next. Can you share your background experiences with inner source? Sure. Thanks, Claire. Um, hello, everyone. I'm Mishari Mukul. I'm based in Bangkok, Thailand. Um, I, um, I, I owe my career to, uh, to the open source movement, uh, have been part of various projects uh, for the last 25, uh, almost 30 years now. Um, and, and I've always found open source to be this alternative universe um, to, uh, to, to how humanity or organizations regularly operate. And, uh, and in the past few years, I have been focusing more about how to bring this culture, this method of collaboration, this method of learning um, into, um, into organizations. Um, in fact, I, I'm such a big believer in the open source way of learning that I homeschool my kids and I co-founded a Koda Dojo um, Thailand, uh, which is a, a collaborative space for kids to get together and just learn computing in an open source way. Um, that's what I want to share. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mashari. Right. So the topic today is around inner source culture change. And as you have all described, you have many varied uh, backgrounds and experience around uh, the inner source culture and in fact, open source culture upon which it's all based. Um, so let's get into what kind of behaviors and practices you think helps uh, shift culture and change it for the better in the context of inner source because you've both had ex all had experiences I think of working together on you know on on not 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 in some of, some of you some of you together but but with other people on inner source projects yourselves but in fact all of you have, have also helped other people so Paul let's get started with you what do you think are the behaviors at an individual level what 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 needs to shift from a culture change perspective and what helps that shift yeah yeah, well, the, the, the change that I've gone through myself, let's start with that, <laughs> I think, is uh, was a moment in my career where I had to let go things that I was very fond of doing myself. Yeah, and, and where I was forced actually to share that with others. That was the first time. <laughs> not, not a very good practice, I would say. But, uh, but what it did with me is uh, from then that moment onwards, I thought, okay, this afterwards looking back it was a great experience because what it brought to me is that i could do different things 
and others were successful with what I was doing in the past. And that was a great uh, uh, yeah, conversion moment, so to say, to inner source, because from that moment on, uh, my uh, credo has been, uh, let's make myself redundant to the things I do as soon as possible by sharing them with others and making them successful with it. And uh, by, doing, by doing that, you can actually do a lot more together than you did on your own. So that's my personal experience. And that's also uh, how I inspire other folks to do the same, eh? just to uh, tell about my story and make it a bit more specific than I do in this call. But um, that, that it, it feels scary at first, but once you get the recognition and, and uh, getting comfortable and get, get some coaching uh, also, it really starts to, uh, to pay off, um, not only for yourself, but also for others. And I think that feel that's I think the best recognition you can get, uh, that uh, that you see others being successful with what you contributed uh, to the inner source uh, community. Um, so I think it's uh, it's uh, important to um, to talk about what's in it for us, but also what's in it for me as as an individual, and and how can I actually start doing things so for me personally? For instance, a new. Um, an experience was to actually go to a new inner source platform that we have internally and uh, to not be afraid to really submit something, contribute something, and do a pull request, etc. And then see that people really love that you contribute is really uh, rewarding. Um, in, in a custom context, what I've seen is that um, in a large retail organization where I was active as a management consultant, uh, initially, we had a, a well, a, almost a fighting culture, I would say, fighting against each other, not willing to share, sitting on the golden eggs, um, uh, these kind of things. And it was a culture that was there for, well, a long time because I've been with them longer. Uh, the last two years, we changed that to a culture where they are sharing globally all the code they have. Uh, between all the operating companies they have. And I think that's a, a great achievement. Um, and yeah, it, it, we went through the same changes on personal level, but also on organizational level. I think what really helped there was the uh, top-down facilitation of this motion. Uh, not, not, in, not imposing, but I would say facilitating and uh, empowering people to do this and to fail and also to learn. I think that's uh, an essential uh, addition to the personal bit as well. So can I can I just uh, just elaborate a little bit more on what, on what you described there? Because I think you were talking about the importance of recognition and coaching and being comfortable with it and seeing the impact of your work. And I think that's all great. And at the very beginning, you mentioned the fact that you were strongly encouraged to get started, perhaps against your natural inclination. And um, so I just want to just double check that very first time was was that something that where where, you, where someone said, let's walk through this together. Let, let's you know, let's let's do this. Let's start sharing. How, what was that very first? Uh, experience how did that manifest itself yeah actually, actually it was uh, uh, something uh, I was forced to do because they wanted me to uh, to go to another position so I, I had to transition the things I knew um, um, and that was yeah it was scary so change is always scary um uh, in when when you're in it yeah yeah um in this in this case it was about uh uh, the CCUE, yeah, we have a cloud center of excellence in the, in the in Microsoft. Um, I was one of the founding fathers of that CCUE, and um, at a certain moment in time, from ideation, incubation, scale up, it becomes a normal thing, and that was the time to hand over. Yeah, and and it felt a bit well awkward <laughs> to let go something that you have been doing for two three years something like that and give it to someone else and they are going to do something with it no idea what <laughs> well, uh, yeah and and that felt scary for me yeah I, br a brilliant example and i think you know just to to i suppose note that one because we're always noting opportunities for new patterns and things like that but that idea of a role change being an actual trigger for a sharing event uh, something that would actually incentivize someone to do sharing and um, is one we probably should note so brilliant thank you paul for that harleen i'll come to you next so what do you think are the behaviors and practices and in fact your own personal experiences about culture change in this respect 
Yeah, from uh, from my personal experience, I would uh, start with an example uh, wherein when I joined a particular team, um, okay, it was uh, like um, I would say uh, the knowledge was all in the minds of people. Okay, it it wasn't really documented somewhere. We we had to go through the KTs. We used to onboard people. They'll talk to people, find out what to do and where to start. Okay, so when I joined that team, what I started doing was uh, like based on the knowledge I grabbed from other people, I started documenting that in a wiki site so that whenever we onboard new people, that acts as a knowledge base for people to get started. Because new people, they do not have a clue on where uh, to get started when they start working on any particular engagement. I would say that was the first step when I uh, started inner sourcing uh, the content. And um, it's like uh, almost uh, two, two and a half years now. And I see how people embrace uh, the content and everybody who is onboarded, that is the first go to place uh, for anybody to refer to the content there. So that was uh, my, uh, I would say first um, example um, for how I started uh, the inner source thing. Now, um, I always talk about the DevOps Dojo community that we have within Microsoft. And uh, they also started uh, their inner source journey, the problem uh, they were facing was everybody was creating content and everybody was having their own copy of the content. There was no single source of truth that we are having, right? I would make some changes. I would keep it to myself, not able to share with others because I may forget about it, right? That is uh, where we started uh, having, the, uh, having to inner source everything. And it became so uh, successful successful, so well accepted that we even demonstrated how we inner source to our customers as well. And with, when I was working with one of the customers, they were like, can you guide us uh, uh, to build a community within our organization so that we can adopt these inner source practices and um, take them forward within uh, within their organization. So that's uh, the kind of impact I I say that uh, we could see with inner source. And it's uh, just not um, that the word of mouth that we have. We are tracking numbers, how many people are visiting our inner source site, how many people are contributing to it. So that's, uh, that's where also we have the data uh, also to prove that people really are liking uh, things, uh, what we are doing. And does that have a like an inverse impact? So do you think that actually measuring that data helps you or, or the, the, the tracking you're doing, does that actually help you drive more culture change or get more people involved? I mean, is, are you are you using it in that way? Yes, because when when you see more people are getting benefited out of it, it's it, it like acts as a motivating factor for you, right? Uh, because you get excited that, oh, my God, this is helping so many people and uh, like you want to create an impact on others as well as part of your day job. It is just not working for yourself, it's helping others as well, right? And so, that is uh, how uh, this in a source thing is um, helping us grow. And those numbers, they are motivating people within the community to contribute more. Okay, so 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 what I'm hearing now from both yourself and Paul, that this idea of being recognized as you contribute is, is one element, but the idea of being able to show back the impact that, that each contributor has over time um, is also a, a, an incentivizing kind of action as well, so that people can not only see that their contribution at the point in time has been recognized, but that over time it's appreciated because more and more people can use it after the fact. Would that be a fair summary of that? Yes, because I would say incentivizing um, as a self um, satisfaction mm -hmm. uh, that how much you have created an impact on the community that is uh, there. Um, I'm, uh, and you can always uh, position it in the conversations that you are having with your management about the impact that you are creating. So yes, incentives are definitely there. And those also act as motivating factors those for us. For formal incentives as well then, or yes. getting in the community. Well, that's, that's, pr that's pretty helpful as well. So the company actually rewards from an incentive perspective in that in that regard too. Okay, very good, thank you. So Mashari, how about you? What, what, what have you found actually from a personal perspective and from an individual perspective as, as you work with others? Okay, so um, so I always find myself 
pulling uh, tools and uh, and a methodology from the open source community um, into into various uh, co uh, contexts of mine. Uh, so, uh, for example, I was um, um, I happened to be in a um, in in let's say it was a board meeting, right, where there were different conflicting parties who are at at loggerhead, and uh, and you know it it, it seemed like. Uh, people were hearing 25% of the information um, that where that where they were in conflict uh, and discarding the other 75% where they were in agreement. So I uh, 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 whipped up a document, put it up there, and I said, "Okay, everyone, give me your positions." Right, and then I I I I listed it out and created a, a single source of truth for everyone's position. And then we realize, okay, well, there is a lot here that we can collaborate upon. And when with, with the other 25% where we're in conflict, let's figure this out in another session, how, um, how we can move forward. So already, because we have a single source of, source of truth, we have all the major points documented that has gone a tremendous uh, way, uh, distance um, in, um, in resolving the problem. Um, uh, another project that uh, that I was recently involved with, um, uh, 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 a public one, was the case of a grad and an open street map. So, uh, so what had happened is that uh, grad had brought in uh, a, a huge team of contributors, uh, right, uh, to the project. So each area in open street map, it's like Google Maps. You have uh, you have contributors going and and creating maps and uh, and putting in points of interest. And these are like a handful of people, maybe ten. 10 people per area and it's very uh, niche and uh, and um, art artisanal right and then uh, a grab wanting to improve the map grab is asia's um, equivalent of uber southeast asia's equivalent of uber for those who don't know so they decided to improve their map for their uh, for their services and they brought in probably a thousand or more contributors into the map and, and suddenly things got went went hayward so again um and and the community was was very upset about this. So so how was this resolved? Uh, again, uh, using uh, open source and open source methodology. So I so I discussed uh, with the uh, team lead of, of Grab. I decided, okay, well let's take all your your main operating procedures. Let's put it in the wiki, the OpenStreetMap wiki, and let's have a conversation around that, and and see where your processes have gone wrong, and then your 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 contributors. Can, uh, can can follow the new process. So you see everything, when everything becomes collaborative, when things become a learning process, um, sometimes it happens that if you are say from a, uh, a, a more, maybe a more powerful or more um, exclusive um, organization, there's a sense of superiority, right? Like I know what I'm doing, uh, but then, um, uh, but then uh, the the open source or the inner source mindset is that of humility, right? Right. I, I may I'm, I may know a lot, but I can always learn from the people around me, and and that is the approach that we took, both from the perspective of the community and from the perspective of Grab. And and together we uh, we came up with a system that works. So the community uh, contributed to Grab's processes, giving um, uh, giving guidance and know-how so that Grab can improve the way that they contribute the map. Grab also brought their resources in, in and uh, has started contributing to some of the issues that the, that the community was having about things like semantics and, uh, and more um, um, academic aspects. So, so it was win-win, it was collaborative, there was a lot of learning and uh, there was, uh, and, and I think that there was also a lot of trust that uh, was created between uh, various parties. And I think that this is very important in driving uh, driving a collaborative culture such as that in inner source or open source. Yeah, those those relationships between people that grow up, and and I know that I've witnessed that in in many of the the case studies and other examples that we've heard that they become so important as an as a as a as a. Um, amplifying factor to the collaboration because you actually have this sense of accountability to a community, not just to your formal structures, um, and that that can be so important. And and so a, a couple of things I've noted from our discussion so far, and it might be worthwhile just like kind of listing them out here just to make sure I have them right. Um, but one, it's really interesting that each of you have discussed about not only using inner source to share code, but also using it as a way to collaborate on information. So so you know it strikes me that actually this this might be a, a, you know a, something that we we 
we can also point to as potentially a way to get things started because sometimes people feel more comfortable kind of editing a wiki or, or a document in that inner source way rather than necessarily going the full whack to you know figure out the whole kind of code contribution and, and all of that sort of thing so just as a as a behavioral tool like the idea of sharing information may, may be a great way to get started that's really interesting to me um the second thing that i've noted is that i think in each of your cases that you just described so far it, it required someone to say let's try this why don't we all try this together as a way to collaboratively capture this information or move forward so it, it required a kind of a uh catalyst to begin the whole process to actually suggest that um and then you've all actually mentioned that during that process there was someone to help you through the process necessarily rather than it being a standalone just go just go look at the readme and off you go now we i know that we have um we have seen other uh examples of of uh oh i'm sorry has someone has my audio cut? I've just started seeing. Oh, you can hear. Okay, fantastic. Sorry, there was a there was a little note to say that we might be able to hear me. Um, but all all I, I just to, to go back to that point, I think what's really really interesting about about that kind of collaborative process is that, and I've lost my train of thought now. I'm gonna have to. <laughs> I'm going to have to recalibrate. But the idea, and thanks, Paul. Though good to check the sound. Um, but the idea that we can actually uh, uh, collaborate with help sometimes by ourselves so sometimes the readme can be enough but 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 often time for a first time collaborator to help that shift that culture change to begin with it may require and can maybe be helped by an external catalyst saying have a go with this then perhaps someone helping them through the process just so that they feel safe in doing it and for all of you i think the end result was a reinforcing factor that actually helped that culture change so when they saw the different way of working and the positive results of the collaboration that reinforced the culture change would that be a fair um kind of summary of some of the discussion so far yeah yeah i um i think that's fair Okay, so so now I'm going to come back round to you, and we probably have only room for one very short more uh, another another kind of round here. But I, I just want to actually think about from your perspective, um, anything that you felt, and this is very briefly now because we'll be on the last last short. But anything you think may have in fact um, been additional help that an organization could put in place in order to facilitate that culture change, to actually um, smooth the path or make it happen faster. Um, so, Paul, if you can hear me, can you hear me? Yeah, now? I can, I can yeah, hear you. Excellent. Sorry. <laughs> um, if, if you can, if, if you can uh, perhaps comment on from an organizational perspective, apart from, for example, rewards that I think Harleen mentioned earlier, but is there anything else you think from an organizational perspective can help that culture change happen? Yeah, so so what we're I think struggling with uh, with customers, but also internally, <laughs> is the point you made is uh, the difference between uh, the the existing organization and the community of practice. So I think there is uh, I I learned a new term is often the the inner source is seen as a grassroots initiative, mm -hmm. where the uh, where it can also be a astroturf. Yeah, it's artificial grass <laughs> and artificial grass uh, in inner source for to me is that it is something that is imposed on you from the line organization to start doing. And I think that's the uh, really the wrong example and a good example for me would be and, and that's to your question is to um, to really uh, uh, yeah, foster role models and change agents and people that really live this, embody this in a source culture and start evangelizing and taking peers and, and uh, other stakeholders in the organization with them. Uh, and what, what Carleen didn't, Harleen didn't mention yet, I think is that um, for DevOps Dojo, the community of practice is across all kinds of organizational units within Microsoft. So it's not just consulting or something. Now it's across a variety of, of business units within Microsoft. Um, so that's also really new for Microsoft, I would say, because you remember this organization diagram set with the pistols. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, the matrix. Yeah, exactly. And, and that's nowhere near what, what the community of practice is about, eh? because it's really uh, valuing uh, this contribution. Um, so, yeah, I, th I think uh, that that's really helping. So we're looking, actually, I started a 
internally I started a uh, idea to um, intentionally start uh, change the culture in Microsoft. Yeah, not only organically, but intentionally start doing that with leadership help. Yeah, so with HR, with uh, all, the, all the folks that started up the initiative around inner sourcing, et cetera. Uh, and and that, took, uh, that gained a lot of traction. So actually, while we're speaking, we're also trying to get ahead around how to uh, scale that up even throughout the organization uh, outside the DevOps Dojo also. Very nice. So, so, so organizational recognition of the communities of practice approach. So exactly, that, I, exactly. I, you know, yeah. I think that's fantastic. So Harleen, how about from your perspective? Yeah, I would uh, expand on uh, the thought which uh, Paul has put, put forward because the uh, organizational expansion is one of the very important things because what, what we have been uh, doing uh, within Microsoft is grabbing every opportunity inside organization and also outside wherever possible to market what we are doing so that we can get people excited about uh, uh, this inner source concept. Right, so it it is like uh, starting at a small as small scale as I'm in my work group meeting. I would be presenting to my peers like this is what we are doing within this community, and also I can present it to my skip level managers so that they they can probably when they are strategizing for the next year they can they can think about okay this is something that. Uh, Harleen has showed us, and this is where we can put this, uh, put this right. So those small, small marketing things, I would say, within organization, is something that uh, really helps. Yeah. yeah. So ce celebrating the bright spots of, uh, and and actually, mm -hmm. almost marketing the bright spots so that other people can get a bit of the happiness as well. <laughs> the inner source love. So that's brilliant. Exactly. Thank you, yes. Harleen. Mishari. Um. So I um, I think and and I've seen this this uh, this example happen over and over again. I think that I think that inner source or our open source is is the natural way of of collaborating, right? When 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 given the opportunity to start from first principles or even as a small community, you, you put a bunch of random strangers together and have them solve a problem. The way that they will solve it is very much the way that you would do in in open source uh, um, or, or, or inner source, um, especially when they're collaborating through, um, through the network, through, through the internet. Um, so, I, 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 so I think that um, um, the, the first thing that is very most important is, is the tooling, right? There has to be tooling that allows for collaboration. Uh, Git, wikis, um, um, other documentation and, and, and chat tools, um, a, um, a exploring, um, discovery, sorry, um, the ability to find other people who can help you in your project and 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 endeavor. Um, I think that this is important. Um, secondly, these tools should be accessible and and of low friction. So it's no use, for example, if you um, if you need to wait for six weeks before uh, someone approves your access to the company wide uh, chat or Git. Um, um, the uh, uh, these should these tools should be easily accessible. Uh, the, the documentation also, um, also helps you get there. Um, then uh, on, on the next layer is, 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 the, is, the, is the actual, the, the grants, the people themselves, um, getting them to, uh, to use the tool and, and, um, and, and seeing that, 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 these, that this is the, the right way uh, of, of, of doing it or the natural way of doing it, right? After that, then then after that, I think comes the incentives um, for um, uh, for for behaving um, 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 in this way, and and lastly is the enforced policy, um, the um, the, uh, um, the the rules that says that that you must personally. I think that this this hierarchy uh, works pretty well. I, I can't remember where I saw it. I'm sorry, but uh, but 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 it makes but it makes a lot of sense. Okay, so, so, so that's fantastic. So 
again, to, to try and recap some of the themes that have come out here, there is the, the idea of painting the picture of what can be achieved together from a collaborative perspective can be can be very compelling um, when people, in particular when people see an example of how wonderful that can turn out and how what a positive experience it can be, even if, as Paul mentioned, there might be some initial kind of, you know, trepidation about going into a new way of working. But, but actually seeing the result can be very motivating. But having kind of top-down support and a declaration of we support this way of working can also help in terms of the motivation or the direction that people are going to um, but as Mashari said just in terms of making sure that culture change happens smoothly this the, the removing friction in terms of making sure that the tools are easily accessible they're all there everything set up can be a very important part there as well and then we we've discussed this idea of how you recognize and reward contributions not just at the time it happens but also after the fact where people can see the impact, the ongoing um, uh, artifacts that, that are there, that they that continue to have impact even after they may have done their contribution and making sure you reinforce that can be, can be an important part as well as potentially formal incentives that actually reward people's contribution. Um, there are some amazing examples, and I know I've missed a few there that kind of came out, but we really will have to go back over this particular session and pick out a few more of the uh, of the patterns that I think have come out in today's call. Um, so at this point, I want to say a big, big thank you to Mishar, Mishari, Harleen and Paul, who have joined us here on the call today. Um, at this point in time, we are going to pause um, and stop the recording of this community call. So I'll say goodbye to everyone who may be listening online. Um, but now